You guys ready for the Word of God? Amen. Let's open our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. And as you're opening your phones, and it's okay to use your phone here at church as long as it's on silent, because if it rains, I'll kind of look awkwardly at you. So uh, make sure it doesn't rain, but you can use it and definitely share some thoughts with your friends. Um, I want to tell you about next Sunday. Next Sunday, my uh, spiritual pastor, Pastor Judy, is going to be ministering in both services, uh, 9.30 and 11. So make sure to be here. You will be blessed. What a blessing she is. She's a sought-after speaker all over the world. She's building um, orphanages in Ghana and Kenya, and it's, you, want, you don't want to miss it from her. And she probably will be praying for people after each service. So uh, she prophetically spoke this church into existence before there was anything. I was just sitting over there and uh, in her service Sunday night, and she came to me and she said, you're going to be the pastor of this church. And I was like, no, I'm not. She's like, yes, you will. And she's like, from now I'm going to call you a pastor. And I was sitting like on row four of, over there where you're sitting. And from there, look, look what God has done. And look what God is doing. She's a true prophet of God. And she's going to be ministering here next Sunday. All right, let's read. Honor your father and mother. Actually, that's a commandment number five that God gave to Moses. Honor your father and mother. And Paul repeats it. And throughout the Bible, you see this word honor, which is not very popular in our culture. You know what we, we honor? We honor cool, young and hip. Somebody's got swag. But Bible says honor the old people, your father and your mother. I know when I turned 30, my buddies, uh, for fun, who were younger than me 10 years, called me old already. And so we, we like to make fun of old, you know. But um, here the Bible says, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with promise. And here's what it says. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you. And you will have a long life on the earth. Long life on the earth. God is calling us to honor our mothers and fathers. Why? Because he cares for us. And he wants us to have a lone life. If I was your enemy and wanted to hurt you, I would want to break. I, I would want you to break God, God's commandments. Why? Because they only hurt us when we break them. Here's what I always say. We don't break God command, God's commandments. They break us. We don't hurt God by breaking his law. We hurt ourselves. Our Western culture is built on, mostly focused on young people. Young people are cool, young people are hip. But if you look at all other culture, even uh, the Native American culture here, they're all about honoring their elders. Chinese culture, African culture, every culture, Spanish culture, it's all about honoring. What, what, what are we missing that they have? What do we not understand that they understand? And... Um, it's the word of God. And when we obey it, it brings a blessing into our life. When we disobey it, it hurts us. Now, point number one, all parents are flawed. Would you agree with that? So are the children. Everyone in this world is flawed. Your parents are flawed. Their parents were flawed. And if you become a parent today, you will be flawed. You will be imperfect. Okay? And so if we wait until we find perfect parent, we will never find one. Because there isn't one. But see, God knows that we live in an imperfect world with imperfect people. And he says this, still, honor your imperfect parent so you can have a long, good life on the earth. So you can be blessed on the earth there's no perfect parents and can i tell you a little secret there's no perfect children either Amen. listen the first day you were born you brought your mom so much pain <laughs> all of you the first day you were born i think god gives women mothers pain in the beginning so any pain after that it's kind of downhill 
You were born, just when you were born, you brought pain to your parent. And from there on, we bring so much pain. I brought pain to my parents, to my mom, and, uh, and you did too. Somebody will say, but I didn't choose my parents. They didn't choose you either. They didn't choose who their children was going to be. They just came. Right? Maybe all parents, if we're honest. Can I be honest? Sometimes you look at other kids and you're like, I wish I had that kid. <laughs> and the kids look at us and they say, I wish I had that parent. Right? We... We don't choose our children. And children, you don't choose your parents. We're all imperfect. Sometimes you wish, if I chose my children, they would be obedient, nice, always dressing good, and, and have good attitude, right? And maybe be sporty or fashionistas, or I don't know what kind of children you would choose. But definitely, we have children. God gave them to us, and we love them. Okay, so yes, you didn't choose your parents, but they didn't choose you either. They got what they got. <laughs> Truth, come on, somebody. And if we wait till our parents are perfect, we will never honor them. And we will never receive the blessing. If you only focus on the negative in any person, even 1% of negative will cause you to demonize that person. Would you agree? In every person, there is humanity and there is divinity. Meaning you are made in the image of God. There is spirit of God within you. That's why Jesus said, even one of these little children, be careful not to put them down because their angels see the face of the Father. Divinity, made in the image of God. That's why Jesus Christ came to die for us because we're so important, because there's, we're children of God. But because of sin, we're all, we got humanity and sin in us. And so watch this. If you only focus on the sin of a person, you will judge him and you will condemn him and you will hate him. And you will put him down in your heart. Because if you only fo focus on humanity. Now on the other side, if you only focus on divinity of a person, you will idolize him. You will magnify him. And no person is meant to be idolized. And so here's what we have to learn in life immediately today. We have to learn that we have to reconcile both of these things. Humanity of a person and divinity. That means you won't idolize a person and you won't demonize a person. You will look through them how God looks at them. They're my child, imperfect, but I still love them. And so is everybody else. Learn to see people's humanity and Divinity together. Learn to reconcile those two things together. If you don't, you will walk in arrogance and pride. And that's why Jesus said, you see a speck in your brother's eye, but you don't see a two by four in your own eye. Man, I want to see people through the eyes of God. I want to see a face of God in every human being. Here's what John says. How can you say you love God who you've never seen, but a person you see, you, you can't love? When there's God in them, divinity in them, how can you not see that? That's what John is saying. How can you not see that this is my child? This is my image. How can you not see that? See, it's easy to love something you don't know and idolize and, and you don't never seen. But God says, there's somebody here on earth that you can see my face in. My practice has been in, in, in the last few months since I got this revelation is to see the face of God in every person. Is to see the face of God. And some people drive me crazy. <laughs> and that's when I'm reminded. Holy Spirit says, what about what's in them that you don't have that shows a little bit of me? And I'm like, ah, you're right. You're right. You're so <laughs> complex. <laughs> Now, if you had an abusive parent, and uh, today you just can't hear this because you're like, you don't know what they've done to me. And like I said, no parent is perfect, but some of you had physical abuse, mental abuse, and some even sexual abuse. What should you do? Uh, God promises to deal harshly with people who abuse children. 
He said it would be better to tie a noose around your neck and put it a big rock and throw you in the sea than to hurt one of these little ones. So God is about protecting children. He knows them. He made them in the mother's womb. And that's why we are to be also protective of our children. Now, here's a big question. Why should we honor our mothers today? You ready for this? Number one, if you're writing this down, they made us. What a great revelation. You were made by your mom and dad. They made you. You wouldn't be here without them. And it would be sad if you were never here. My wife and I, we were having our uh, anniversary vacation. And after about one week, she's like, do you see yourself staying here longer? I'm like, yes and no. And I said, the only way I could stay here longer if our children were here. Like if our children were here, we could stay here for a long time. I couldn't imagine my life without those three stinkers. <laughs> right? When we go on vacation, we're like, well, I wouldn't want to see them. <laughs> we just need time alone from them. But after six, seven days, we're like, we can't be without them anymore. We got to go see them. <laughs> right? It would be a shame if you weren't here. The reason you're here because of your parents, no matter how imperfect they were. You are here today because of your parents and that's why you should honor. If somebody did something great for you or to you, you would be thankful. If somebody gave you a million bucks, you would be like, but if you weren't here, a million dollars wouldn't matter. So they give you something even greater. They gave me something greater, a gift of life. Thank you. Mom, thank you. It took your mom's DNA and your dad's DNA to make you. In Talmud, which is a Jewish uh, commentary on the Old Testament, here's what rabbis said. Parents are partners with God in the creation of a child. There's no unplanned, unwanted children. Maybe you didn't want them, but God wanted you. And God says, I gave you a purpose. If you're fulfilling that purpose, I can cover your weaknesses. If you're not, you're on your own. Don't be Jonah running from God. Because the storms come. Every act of disobedience has a storm in it. Honoring your parents expresses thankfulness to those who brought you into this world. Just like you should... Be grateful to someone who does a favor for you. So too, you should be grateful to your parents who are only reason you're here in this world to begin with. Amen. So thank you, moms. Number two, why should you honor your parents? First one was they made us. Second one, they made or invented most everything we have. They made or invented most everything we have. Listen, when I was a teenager, I don't know what happened, but when you're a kid, you think your parents are the best. And then when you become the teenager, you think they don't know anything. You think they're not smart. You think, you know. And here's the problem. that Eventually, we grow up out of being teenagers, but we still have that mindset. I, I don't think my parents know at all. But imagine, most of them lived 20, 30 years longer on this earth than you did. They have more experience. They have more wisdom. They have more knowledge. They know a lot. But here's the point. They've made or invented most of the things that we have. If it wasn't for your grandparents or great-grandparents, Nazis would probably be ruling the world. It was their generation that went to World War II and fought Hitler... And Nazis. And that's why we can still speak English today and not German. For sure Russia would be speaking German. Because they, Hitler was going to take all, all over the world. But it's the generation. Have we ever thought about thanking that generation? If it wasn't for the Vietnam War vets. We would probably be living in a country like Venezuela. Communist socialist country. 
They went to fight communism there so it wouldn't come here. And I dislike communism. I grew up first 12 years of my life under communism. And it's not freedom. It's control of the 3% on the top controlling everybody else on the bottom. Venezuela right now is the next country to fall because of communism and socialism. Did you know that average Venezuelan, today I was speaking to one just here three months. His name is Douglas. Coming to our church, somebody invited him. And today I was speaking to him, he was crying on my shoulder. He's like, it's terrible there. Did you know that average Venezuelan has lost in the last five years 20 plus pounds? In America, in the last five years, guess what happened here? <laughs> We've gained about 20 pounds, right? Some of us pay big money not to gain the pounds. <laughs> he teared up. He said, thank you for speaking about this. If it wasn't for that generation, we might have been another Venezuela. Where people are starving, where supermarkets are empty. In the United States, we have freedom. Freedom of commerce and freedom of faith and freedom of everything even if you are if you want to do some crazy we still give you freedom i might disagree with me with you but you still have freedom we live in the greatest country in the world and it's because of what our parents and grandparents provided for us when i was a teenager i thought i knew it all but logically now i think about it i didn't know anything what have I accomplished as a teenager at 13 years old? I thought I was the, t the king of the world, but what have I done? What have I achieved? It was all the achievements of my parents and great-grandparents. Right now, you think you're cooler than your parent, and you probably are. You like the hip music, you dress cool, and you still have a nice tight body because you didn't have babies. But that's all you got. Everything else you have, it's your parents' achievement. Listen, grandparents, great-grandparents, parents, you made this country the way it is. The greatest country in the world. You've built all these things that we have. It's not your kids. Don't let your kids make you feel like something less. Because they hopefully will build great things in the future, and they will. But they haven't yet. It was all because of your efforts. It was all because of our mothers and fathers that we have what we have today. You know, in, in our city, we have like 3% unemployment. That's like almost like... If you're an employer right now, you know what I'm talking about. It's impossible to find a good employee. Unless you pay them like 50 bucks an hour, then you'll get a good employee. It, our company was advertising for a couple of weeks on, on Facebook. And social media and guess what there's not a lot of good talent out there true if, if you're an employer you know what I'm talking about we do live in the best uh, place on earth and listen it's all because of our parents and grandparents so if you're like what should I honor them for see if you only look at their imperfection you'll never honor them but looking at their imperfection is pride because then you miss your own imperfection Looking at their imperfection. And I see a lot of complaining in our country. Our country is so bad. Our country is so bad. It's, it's better than it's ever been in the history of the world. There was nothing better. And we live it now. Why not re rejoice? Why not celebrate? Instead of being so negative all the time. Living in the best country need pills. Because it's so bad. It's better than it ever been. They made or invented most everything you have. And you call them stupid? <laughs> My mom and dad brought me into this great country when I was a kid. If it wasn't for my parents and grandparents, same with you. Most of you are not Native Americans. That's their country here. Most of you came here. Why? For a better life. 
Have you thanked your parents or grandparents just for that? You're American today. What a privilege. Have you thought about that? See, our culture wants... Culture is always against God. And, and here's what I mean. Uh, God says, honor your father. Culture says they're stupid. So dishonor them. And then we suffer. The children suffer because they're not learning from their parents. And in the book of Proverbs, it says, learn from your father, learn from your mother. Tie whatever they teach you, tie around your hands. But we don't. We think our kids are just little gods, just beautiful little gods. They haven't done anything. They haven't achieved anything yet. They, haven't, they didn't even graduate it yet. <laughs> Give them some time. They, they're, they're special, yes. But teach them to honor See, God is wise. God knew what he was talking about. It, it was because of my grandparents and parents that I know God today. <sighs> I don't want to step on any more toes, but can, can I be a little more honest today? Just a little bit more. If I'm going to offend somebody, let me just do it. <laughs> If you are a young person, you most likely have not made an impact on this world yet, other than your cute selfies you post on your Instagram and Snapchat every day to bless the world with your beautiful art. <laughs> but think about it. You didn't invent Instagram and Snapchat. It was the previous generation who did. You didn't invent Facebook. It was the previous generation. You didn't invent phone, iPhone or, or Samsung. You didn't invent cars, air conditioner, radio, telephone, light bulb, or soap. <laughs> if you wear glasses, diapers, thank you. <laughs> if you wear glasses, someone invented optical lenses. If you ever go to a dentist, somebody invented anesthesia. Praise God. We got a doctor over here in a house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're glad you used that, you know. Somebody else invented a mirror, ladies, and makeup, and a straightener, and hair straightener. It wasn't your generation, and most likely generation before you. So if you're looking for things to honor, I could give you a, a, a thousand things to honor today. What about electricity? You couldn't charge a beautiful smartphone bedazzled with things, right? You couldn't charge that thing that you love, you freak out over. We live better than any generation ever on planet Earth, yet people are so hopeless today. Because I think we lost something. We lost the spirit of thanksgiving and honor. And I think it's on us because we gave them things, but we didn't teach them how to honor those things. Amen. You gave your children everything. <laughs> but you forgot to tell them, hey, don't forget. I, it took sacrifice right here's what happens oftentimes teenagers grow up and now it's us <laughs> and we still have the same attitude towards our parents instead of looking for great things they have done and their generation has done and a lot of us are like well my dad didn't invent facebook but his generation did not everybody can be inventor of facebook but everybody in that generation participated You see where I'm going with this? What I see in our culture, we make our kids little gods. They haven't done anything yet. And I'm not saying don't, don't treat them special, but, but don't make them gods. Teach them to also honor. If you see a son dishonoring his mother, you, you check him on that. That's on you, parent. You don't, don't let your child dishonor your spouse. If... It, parents, you got to stick together. <laughs> so you do, you, see, people will treat you. Even children will treat you how you allow them to treat you. And so you, you, you put boundaries and say, nope, you can't treat me like this. Because I can take the internet passcode.
You can have your phone. It's not going to work. <laughs> not right anyway. Often we grow up, but we still have the same attitude of a dumb teenager. Like I was. And we don't change. But God knows better because he's God of thousands of generations. And he says, honor your father and mother. And so um, I've been dishonoring to my parents in my life many times. And I want to change that. And I want to show a great example to my children. But I don't just want to show by example. I want to also teach him. Amen. A horse cannot train himself. He needs a trainer. I actually took a training course, how to train a horse. Yeah, so many good lessons. This guy was a doctor, yeah, and he was teaching how to train a horse and how it relates to children. It's amazing. He said a horse that's not trained is cheap, but a trained horse is expensive. You add value to your child by training them right. See, we only have a short period of time to train our children. It's called the springtime. And what we plant in them during springtime is what we're going to reap for the rest of their life. And so why is it so important to learn from the Word of God and to train our children in the way that they should go? Don't just allow the government to train your children. Don't just let the school system or college system train your children. You put some godly values in them. We need to do the work because it's easier to leave a horse alone and just, you know, because he's going to buck, you know? <laughs> right? But if you want to bring value to the horse, you got to invest into them. Time. Amen. Amen. So let's change our attitude today, church. Let's change it from the dishonor attitude. And I know some of our parents were maybe not perfect. Mo Listen, all of them were not perfect. All of us are messed up as parents. We mess up. But that doesn't stop. God knows when he says honor your parents. Because it's good for you. It's good for you. Last point. Well, kind of. <laughs> Why should we honor our parents? Because we need our parents even when we are 40, 50, 60, or 100 years old. We still need our parents. I counsel people. And when people come to me, a lot of their psychological problems is because mom wasn't there or dad wasn't there. And it's like you can see a hole in the person's heart because mom or dad wasn't there. And they're always saying, I wish mom was there. I wish dad was there. Ever said that? And maybe you lost a parent. You know what I'm talking about. There's always a hole. And I, from observing and watching, I realize, yes, that's true. We still need our parents. I'm 40 and I still need my parents. I remember um, when I was uh, 17 years old and I was starting my business. And um, nobody would take me seriously because 17-year-old teenagers, come on. I would come to somebody's house because they would call me for a bid, to bid on a job. And like I said, nobody would take me seriously, so I figured it out. I, I'm going to take my grandpa. But my grandpa didn't speak any lick of English. He just knew how to smile. My dad's father. Anatoly. And so he would stand by the pickup truck. I said, Grandpa, get out and just stand by the pickup truck. <laughs> All right. So I would knock on somebody's front door and they would say, you going to do this job for me? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, but no, 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 just me and Grandpa. Me and Grandpa. And a lot of people would give me a chance then to do their work. I didn't know what I was doing, but <laughs> that's another point. <laughs> but my grandpa was with me in the first couple of years. My grandpa was with me. And how I wish today that he was here to see the kind of man I became and what God has done and how successful that business has become and all that. And I honestly find myself missing my grandpa. It's like a, a hole, honestly. My mom's uh, father, Nikolai, Nick, uh, when I was buying uh, the property acreage where we were going to live, I, I took him. He came to visit us, and uh, I took him to my property and we stood on top of the hill right where my house is right now and we stood in a knee deep um, 
it was some kind of a grain oats or something wheat yeah it was short you know there's tall oats or wheat and there's short and so we stood there and it was golden it was fall and I said grandpa what do you think I want to buy this place and he told me he said well if you honor God if you put him first God is going to bless you and how I wish today he was here to see to honor him to show him look look I'm your I'm a part of your tree I'm a branch on your tree he never got to see the house I built he loved orchards my grandpa did the, my mom's dad and so uh, I have an orchard now Amen. yeah and me and my kids we take care of it trim it and things like that I wish he saw that but he's not here to see it anymore he's with God and there's always a hole but why live always wishing why regret later why not honor today when we still have our parents I know they're imperfect and I know sometimes we clash but why later live in regret when we have them today let's do what the Bible says we need our parents you will always need your parents and the things we honor move closer to us. And the things we dishonor moves away from us. Remember that principle. It's a spiritual principle. Things you honor, they come closer. Things you dishonor, they go further. And I know there's a lot of unsolved issues that we still have with our parents. Let's solve them. Let's find help. Let's figure it out. Let's talk. Number four, why should you honor your father and mother? Because God commands it, commands it and God knows best. And why? Because he wants you to live, to, to live a long and prosperous life. And if you honor your parents, that's the promise. So how do you honor your parents? Number one, forgive them. Forgive them. They're not going to be perfect. Sometimes we have a picture of what our parents should be. It's a romantic picture. It's not reality. Your parents are who they are. Accept them. Don't wish they were something they're not. This is it. This is what they are. Accept them. Just like you want to be accepted for who you are, accept them for who they are. That's who they are. Okay? Two, speak well of them. Talk good about them. Tim Keller encourages children to respect their parents need to see themselves in you. Tell them how much they impacted your life. You wouldn't be here without them today. I wouldn't be here without strength of my mom and love of my dad. Wouldn't be here today. My dad teaching me how to do repair and mechanics and stuff like that. My dad teaching me, I remember working hard with a shovel digging a garden and I hated it but boy it trained me well to work hard and I am today who I am today because of my parents they impacted my life they've impacted your life admit it Rick Warren says share your life stories with them uh, sometimes you don't know what to say when you come to your parents house and you just don't know what to say Rick Warren says, share your life stories. Their life is usually not as exciting anymore. The older you get, the less exciting your life kind of, you know. Um, but he says, your life is still very exciting. Share with them what's going on. Tell them. Tell them they want to know. I didn't know this, actually, until I, you know, read this from Rick Warren. Seek wisdom from them. Bible says so. Seek their wisdom and appreciate them and support them. I know I... I could talk about those points, but no time. I'm nine minutes over. So, did you enjoy this message? Thanks for tuning in to New Life Sermon Series Online. If you're blessed by these messages and are interested in helping spread the word of God to others, make an investment today. You can give at newlifechurchsf.org. If you have a story or a testimony to share, let us know on our website as well. We hope you have a blessed day and enjoy today's message by Pastor Alex.